Hi, welcome to this overview on IBM Spec Protect reporting options as of version 7.1.6. First, we'll go over the Operation Center, which is great for monitoring, as well as two-week history reports. Then we'll take a look at the REST API. And finally, we'll take a look at the TSM reporting and monitoring, which is really good for long historical reporting. The Operation Center has built-in monitoring capabilities. The data will refresh by default five minutes. Now you can go into the settings and change this default. And this will show up data for both your hub server as well as the other spoke servers that we might be monitoring. So these are your various Spectrum Protect servers in your environment. You can drill down into any of these areas and get specific information about one particular Spectrum Protect server or client or tape device or whatever you're looking for. Now, when you drill down, you can take the information that shows up and export it to either an Excel spreadsheet or a notepad by simply clicking on this little export icon. And this icon will show up in most of the pages beneath the overview page. When you drill down into the detail page, you will see that two-week history that the Operation Center keeps. So for instance, here we're taking a look at the replication details. You can see here the two-week history of the replication, including the workload, the amount of data backed up, and the amount of data replicated. On the left-hand side, we have more of a monitoring feature of each of the sessions that are currently running for replication. Now, if you drill down into another area for properties, you will see the various properties for that entity. And in fact, some of those properties will be able to be updated. In addition, you could export these properties using the Export button. Another feature inside of Spectrum Protect Operations Center is our alerts. Now alerts can be set up for any of the errors, warnings, or informational messages that we log inside of the activity log. Once you've set up the alerts, not only will you see a graphical version of them, but you can drill down and find out individual information about the various alerts. And this includes being able to look at the activity log and we'll show you 500 messages before the alert and 500 messages after the alert so you can help pinpoint what might have caused that error to occur. You can customize the alerts that show up in the operations center. You can either do that with command lines or by sliding over the configure button and then adding or updating the alert messages. The alerts are pulled from the activity logs, and this includes both your informational warning and error messages. We have around 250 plus predefined alerts, but you can go in and alter what we alert on or the category that those are assigned to. There is a life cycle for the alerts that include active, inactive, and closed. And basically the status changes as time passes or the frequency of the alerts changes or if an administrator goes in and closes out a alert. With this alerting, you can also set up specific Spectrum Protect administrators to receive emails when alerts occur. In order to do this, you do have to have Spectrum Protect administrators with system privileges. You do have to turn on the alerts in the Operations Center. And you have to set up the email function on that Spectrum Protect server by doing set alert email on, specifying the email address of the sender, so who this alert will come from. And then you'll need to set up an SMTP server to utilize for mailing out the alerts. Now Spectrum Protect servers don't provide login or passwords capability to authenticate with SMTP servers. And you do need to run this set alert email SMTP host, the host name, as well as set alert email SMTP port on the Spectrum Protect server. Then you'll want to go in and define or update the alert triggers. You'll want to register or update your Spectrum Protect administrator so they have an email address associated with them. And finally, you want to update the administrator with alert equals yes. 
Another feature is our daily reports. These daily email reports summarize the basic health of the Spectrum Protect environment. So this includes both your hub and spoke servers. It includes a high level summary as well as an attached detail report on things like at-risk clients, Spectrum Protect servers, storage pools, storage devices, and so forth. Now the requirements to use this daily email report is once again to have an SMTP server set up and to have a Spectrum Protect administrator with email addresses associated. The email message is sent in an HTML format, so this is viewable in most of your email clients like Lotus, Outlook, Apple, Gmail, and so forth. The attached report is an HTML report, so once you download that, when you go to open it, it will be opened up in a web browser. Here you can see the setup screen for this where we specify, first of all, what the subject is. You can give it any title you want. You can specify who the report came from, the mail server address and port, the time to send this report out, and then the email recipients. And these could be either Spectrum Protect administrators who have an email associated with their Spectrum Protect administrator, or they could be flat out email addresses. Here's a better view of the email report. And if you clicked on the attachment, the type of information you'll see there. You can also customize reports. Now this kind of harks back to the days of the operational reporting. You can add reports to do whatever you want using SQL to specify this. So in order to do that, you would drill down into the report section and click on plus report. You give the report a name say when to send it out, who to send it to, and once again, this can be admin with emails associated, or it can be flat out emails. You'll specify if you want to run this SQL against all of the Spectrum Protect servers, or just the hub server, and then you'll enter the SQL query. Now the SQL query has a max size of 1,450 characters and 5,000 rows per query. This tool will check the SQL command for validity. So if it's not a valid SQL command, you'll immediately see an error when you're typing in the SQL information here on this add report screen. Here is an example of our general operations center report. And here's an example of our customized reports. We also have something called usage reports. This is underneath the settings tab when you go into licensing. And this shows us a capacity estimate that you can use for planning purposes only for either front end usage or back end usage. Now the front end estimates the capacity and this is based on the size of the primary data that's protected for clients versus the back end, which is based on the amount of managed data in a primary storage pool. We also have the ability to pull in the activity logs and error reports from the machines that we're protecting, our Spectrum Protect clients. And we can send that information to the operations center so that you don't have to go out and log on to the individual backup clients to see what occurred there. The client management service software does run on the client machine itself and you will have to install it. Those packages can be obtained either from the product DVD or from the IBM download site. Looking at REST APIs, we also have the ability for customers to utilize a REST API to access about the same information as the operations center. And this will utilize either JSON or XML format. And it basically enables the customer to display the data as they want to see it, not as the operations center shows it. The admin REST API lives on the operations center hub server. And you do need to enable it by going into the settings tab and clicking enable administrator REST API. We find a lot of cloud-based service support this programmatic access using a representational state transfer, which is the REST interface. And this includes both get services, put services, and post services. When you're scripting for the REST API, you can use Java, Python, or PowerShell. We have REST services for both our operation center as well as our client management services. Now, both of those are disabled by default and they do require basic TLS 1.2 authentication. 
We've got some white papers out there you can take a look at if you're interested in working with the REST APIs. Another product we have is the Tivoli Monitoring for Tivoli Storage Manager. This reporting and monitoring piece includes Cognos. The last release that this was updated in is version 7.1.1. It is compromised of a number of downloadable pieces. The licensing is included with your Spectrum Protect server license. And if you are looking for help implementing it, check out this cookbook that I have listed here, or check out our master website out on developer works. Here's a picture of the pieces that make up the monitoring and reporting portion. For monitoring, I recommend you use the operation center. Where this product is good is if you're looking for historical reporting longer than the two weeks that the Operations Center currently provides. You will need to install this monitoring reporting on a separate machine. We do support Windows, AIX, and Linux. As you can see here, you will be installing Tivoli Monitoring for Tivoli Storage Manager, as well as Tivoli Common Reporting. We provide some out-of-the-box reports. The first Reports we classify as status reports, and this includes everything from client activity status to your server activity log details. Here on the left-hand side, you can see an example of a report that we did client storage pool usage. In this case, we ran it against one particular server and three particular clients. We also have out-of-the-box reports for trending reports. This would include everything from client activity success rates to server storage growth trends. Here on the left, we have a server database growth trend report, so you can look at an example, and it was summarized by month. In addition to the out-of-the-box reports, you can also utilize Cognos to write customized reports against the historical data you'll be collecting. And this can support one Spectrum Protect server, or it can be run against multiple Spectrum Protect servers. So in summary, Spectrum Protect has multiple options for monitoring and reporting. For monitoring, I recommend Operations Center. For two weeks of history, also the Operations Center. If you're looking at long-term history, at this point you would want to utilize the TSM monitoring and reporting options or a third-party solution. Thank you for your time.